Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're actually going to begin the reassembly of the little Yamaha Wild One, and we're going to begin with the installation of the motor or engine into the frame. And I've given it some thought, and I've decided to uh, install the motor with the frame upright, which we'll get into in a few more minutes. First thing I want to do, though, is I'm going to go through the hardware that I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, staged here and uh, talk through a little bit of the different bits and pieces. Some of it's NOS or new, not necessarily NOS, but new from Yamaha. And there are a few pieces that I was able, able to salvage from the uh, original project, clean it up. I did not have to replate anything because it was in very good shape, but I did clean it up and repolish it. As well as I had to fabricate a temporary front engine stay to support the front of the engine. So give me a minute here and I'll reposition the camera and we'll get... Here's uh, all the hardware we'll be using to uh, mount the motor back in the frame on the little Yamaha. This is the center stand pin and circlip. This is a new center stand uh, pin. I guess you'd call it a pin. Uh, that's a brand new part that Yamaha still services. The re reason I replaced that one, the, the uh, original had a little bit of a bend in it, and I didn't want to mess around trying to straighten it, though I probably could have and then replated it, but this was quite inexpensive, so I just bought a new one. The sir clip is the original sir clip that I just cleaned up. I did not have to replate that. You can see it's in very good shape. One of the benefits of uh, old two strokes is they they tend to weep so much oil from the exhaust and other places that everything at the lower levels, such as these parts, get coated with oil and it preserves them. So, original sir clip to go for the center stand. In terms of the uh, engine bolts themselves, this was the original, or is the original, uh, one of the rear motor mounts. This happens to be the top rear motor mount. This is the original hardware, the bolt, the washer, and the nut. I just cleaned them up. They're perfectly serviceable. The bottom rear engine mount was missing, believe it or not. It was not there. So I ordered a new one from Yamaha. You can still get this bolt. It originally came with this black finish on it. And I simply took it to my brass wire wheel and brushed that uh, black finish off to get it back to the original bright finish like you can see here and here. The nut and the washer are new also you can see here's the parts bags that some of these parts came in i keep those bags and the reason for that is i have a spreadsheet that when i order parts i keep track of what i've ordered and what i haven't otherwise i lose track and uh, then when i've used them as I'm using the parts, I keep the, the uh, original packaging, and then eventually I'll go back to my spreadsheet and update it to reflect that those parts have been used. That's why I keep these around. But anyway, um, all three of these parts are brand new. The, uh, for the center stand, this is one of the bolts from the center stand, and the original was in a pretty poor shape. And so I just went ahead and Yamaha still services this part. I'm not sure the, in fact, I know the original was not uh, that, that type of head that had been struck. Um, there's a term for that. I forget what it is right now, that type of bolt. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this new part in washer. And these two uh, nuts, bolts, washers combinations are original also. And these are for the stay, the engine stay. This is the chrome one I have to have re -chromed. And these go through like this and at the bottom for the engine. I'll come back to that stay in a minute. But these are original and I just cleaned them up and they came out um, just fine. You can get these new, by the way. Yamaha still services these parts, but I didn't think it was necessary. Now let's move on to the engine stay for, for a moment. Again, this is a stay and it fits something like this. So the bottom part with the two holes mounts to the bottom front of the engine. The upper uh, section here goes into the bottom of the uh, frame. It's the bottom of the top of the frame right below the triple tree. And you'll see that in a few minutes when I get to the project itself. 
but uh, since I'm sending this part off to the, be rechromed, in fact, I have um, tracked down a chromer willing to replate this part. Again, you get a good look at that rust. Have this redone as well as finish up the tank. So this part is getting ready to ship off for a while. So I had to come up with an alternative to replace that stay strut uh, while I continue on with the project. So what I did is I just fabricated this uh, temporary stay. And you can see here about the same size as the original. I looked through my junk box and I had a piece of this 90 degree strapping, utility strapping, that is uh, commonly available at hardware stores. So I quickly made up a emulation piece for this stay so that I can at least put the engine in and this will become that temporary stay to hold the engine in while I work on it until I can get this one back and replace it. So I just run, run it up some uh, straight hardware here, bolted it together. I adapted it to be about the right width here as well as here at the bottom. Actually, will look like that. And uh, it'll be uh, plenty stiff for what I need. The upper bolt that uh, goes through here was originally in the bike was this one. Clearly that's not the original piece. It went like that. And I'll show that to you in a photo here in just a moment uh, when I show you a few things on the computer. So this part, this part from Yamaha, the original part is no longer available. And I have not been able to locate one yet. I, I'll find one eventually, probably used, but you can't buy this new from Yamaha anymore. I tried. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is I just rigged up this temporary piece that will go like that and uh, until I can find the permanent replacement right correct part. This is just a piece of quarter inch all thread with a couple of nuts on each side cut to the, the appropriate length and uh, I put some thick nylon washers to protect the frame, the fresh painted frame on the bike. And we'll get into that in more detail also in a few minutes when we start to mount the motor. But this is a temporary replacement for this, which was incorrect to begin with, until I can find the actual correct part from Yamaha. So that's essentially the hardware minus the original strut that's going to be re-chromed. I'm going to switch over to the computer here, and I'm going to show you some of the photos uh, when I was taking the bike apart. I thought some folks might be interested in that. And then we'll get right on to the actual installation of the motor. Here's one of the photos I took when I disassembled the bike. You can see from the date, this is June, early June of 18. This is now July of 19, so it's a little over a year ago. But you can see that bolt that I alluded to a moment ago. That is this bolt right here, which clearly is not original. It goes through the upper part of the top of the stay where it ties into the frame. Go back here, there's the opposite side. So that would be like that, sitting like that. Finding uh, non-original hardware like this is very common on these old bikes. This, by the way, is an Imperial bolt. It is not metric, surprise, surprise. Some kid probably lost it and uh, went through his dad's stuff in his shop or his shed or his garage or whatever and run to something up that fit and uh, got him through. Again you can see the condition of the bike as I was breaking it down. One of the other things I wanted to share with you is I have talked before about taking photos of my project and here is uh, a shot of all the photos. I've got I think 378 or something for the, this pr particular project. Eventually I start creating folders. You can see body and paint and wheels. The rest of the photos themselves are basically breakdown photos that I take as, as I'm working through the project so that if I get confused at a later point and I'm not sure exactly the orientation of a bolt that it go through from the left to the right or right to left, 
I can reference these photos and I find them invaluable. You can almost not take too many photos. And I'm not going to take you through all of these, but I did want to give you a, a sense of how I document a project as I take it, take it apart. Now, this doesn't take that long. I know people sometimes get a little bit impatient and want to get it done, but I can break a bike like this down and taking photos probably in two to three hours, something like that. And the bigger the bike, the more complicated, of course, the longer it would take, but I find it is a huge time saver and confidence builder later on when you're putting something back together. Here I'm getting into the engine as I'm pulling apart the clutch assembly and where the thrust washers are. And this is the original rear fender. Uh, as I, I alluded to a moment ago, eventually I start moving these into specific subdirectories like engine, frame, wheels and tires, uh, electrical, those kind of things. I haven't quite got to that point. See, I even labeled, this is the, uh, a sprocket. And you can see in and out, so I know which way it goes together. Can't always tell from di uh, uh, parts diagrams later on. This is a shifter assembly here, etc. So my recommendation to people is document your projects thoroughly when you uh, are breaking them down. When I'm uh, looking up parts, typically there are two websites that I go to. Again, I'm North American based or US based, so if you're not in North America, you I'm sure would have the equivalent or access to the same information. My primary search tool and reference is Partzilla. They're based in the US and I like their website because they they show you what they have in stock. So if you look over here item number four, the spring washer is in stock and they tell you how much it costs, 48 cents. And uh, they also will tell you if it ships, if they don't have in stock, this going to be shipping. And that would be, for instance, if you look at item number 13, this washer plate ships in two to three days, which means they have to obtain it from probably a Yamaha warehouse somewhere. This is my primary reference tool. And when I build my spreadsheet, I keep track of these item numbers because they can get really confusing if you got a whole box full of nuts, bolts, washers, and screws, and you're trying to remember which one goes where. Perhaps another time, um, I'll take you through that spreadsheet. This is my primary reference tool, but I also use the Yamaha. This is Yamaha Motors website. Very similar. You can see the diagram here. And then they also list all the parts and they do list what's not available. In other words, it's no longer serviced. Item number one, which is the frame, you wouldn't expect that would be available. But this, uh, this is a great site also. And the one thing I like about the Yamaha site versus some of the others is the diagrams are so clear. These also give you a sense of how the hardware is to be installed in terms of orientation. So if you look at this uh, item number nine, this engine bolt, that's the top engine bolt. That would be this one right here. This is the one that was original on the bike. It shows, it passes through from the right to the left and so the nut and washer go on the left side of the bike. Conversely, the top stay bolt goes from the left to the right. Now, is that always 100% accurate? No. Is it usually? Yes. And uh, so I use this as a reference. If my photos that I, I take that I, I showed you earlier don't jive with this, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is wrong. It could mean, in fact, it probably means someone had the bike apart and put things back together incorrectly, which you'll run into commonly. If all else fails and I don't really know for sure, I follow this diagram from Yamaha. I figure they probably know the most, unless it just didn't, doesn't make sense to me when I go to put it together. Speaking of this engine bolt right here, and that would be number nine, 
One thing that I find odd about this bolt is it's very long. And when I put it in, you'll see what I mean, but it sticks way out here. Pretty sure this is original because it is all metric. I checked it. This is a metric bolt. It looks like the original bolt as best I can tell. And frankly, I'm not sure if something hangs off the end of this uh, further on in the assembly. I have not looked at my diagrams or photos rather to see if something mounts here. But that did strike me as a little bit unusual in terms of the length of that bolt. But anyway, I digress. So this is how I reference parts. The two sites I typically use, and uh, I order, normally I order through Partzilla right here because I can get them in two or three business days. They ship quick. They have a, a lot of inventory. The only issue I have here is you need to batch your orders because you'll, you'll pay for shipping. So if you order a bolt, it'll probably cost you eight bucks in shipping. If you order a box full of bolts, it'll probably cost you eight dollars in shipping. So uh, I tend to batch my orders. It's not a good place to go if you need uh, onesie twosies. If that's the case, I'll usually go to eBay and get free shipping and I might pay a, a few more cents for each part but I'll get free shipping and I'll usually get it in two or three four business days anyway. So enough about parts let's go ahead and reposition the camera and we'll go ahead and get started in putting this uh, engine back in the frame. Here's a shot of the basic setup you can see the frame I've got propped up the headstock is elevated a bit because I wanted to twist the frame back. The motor's in its approximate position it's obviously, it's not mounted yet. I have not mounted this engine yet. It has not been dry fit. You can see I've got a little piece of plywood under the left side of the engine. That's just to level it up like this, so it sits fairly level. And then you can see the various uh, parts, nuts, bolts, and that temporary front engine stayer strut that I fabricated that we'll get to here in just a second, as well as my tools. I lined up and then over here, I don't know if you can see it in the shot or not, I got some anti-seize, the wrenches, uh, sockets, torque wrench. Yes, I will use a torque wrench on this, particularly the engine mounting bolts and the center stand, or I should take that back, the foot peg bar right there because that mounts on the bottom of the engine uh, the bottom engine bolt on the back of the engine. So that'll eventually have to be installed too as I bolt this together. So what I'm going to do next is figure out the best way to position the camera so you can see something and uh, I'm not in the way of my shoulders or head as I'm trying to do this. And we'll go ahead and put it together. I think where I'm going to start is mounting the temporary engine stay here to the top of the headstock or to the to the frame rather and then that will hang down vertically like this. And then all I have to do is swing it up into the engine and bolt it in place when I have the engine at least mounted with one bolt, probably the top frame bolt, which would be right back in here. This is that uh, temporary replacement bolt I uh, made up of a piece of quarter inch all thread with some nuts and plastic washers. And this is going to fit up underneath here like this and support the top of the engine stay. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, fit this in place. The reason I double nutted it is once I have it in, I don't want this sliding back and forth like this potentially and scratching the paint on the inside here, the fresh paint. So that's my theory. We'll see how this works out because I've not obviously done this yet. As I was thinking this process through, I've decided I'm not going to use double nuts because I don't know that I'm going to have enough room in here. So what I think I'm going to do is use uh, two washers on the inside between the strut and the frame and then two on the outside, which actually makes it a little simpler. So let's go ahead and 
that washer, plastic washer, will go between the strut and the frame. Again, that's to prevent the um, paint from being damaged on the frame. And put one on the other side and do the same thing over there. And then I'm going to put a plastic washer on the outside of the frame also. So I'll have to do, uh, come back and do that one here in just a second. That just, uh, I dropped the nut as you saw. And that gives me a reason to pause here for a moment to talk about a couple of things that just occurred to me. You'll notice this old sheet that I have down, and underneath that is a towel. Uh, I've shared this before, but when my wife circulates linens out, bath towels, wash towels, uh, sheets, and that kind of thing, she gives them to me, and I use them in my shop. The reason I like a, either a towel or a sheet or both with plenty of padding is so that when parts fall, they don't drop and bounce and roll off somewhere, and I spend the next 20 minutes crawling around on my hands and knees looking for them. They tend to drop and stay. You'll also notice since I've got this shot here, I think you can see, let me double check, that the top of the engine, I've got a piece of plastic around it with rubber bands to keep debris out of here. And certainly I don't want to drop another bolt down in there, as well as the breather hole in the top, the case I have that plug, so nothing can get down in there while I'm fiddling around here. Anyway, let's move on. So, yeah. I've got the top of the stay mounted. There's uh, plastic washers on the inside and the outside on both sides, so that will not contact the frame at all. It's metal. And uh, I think you can probably get just a bit of a view of how it's starting to line up at the bottom. I don't think I'll be able to use both. There's two mounting holes on the bottom of the engine there. I'll probably only be able to use one. So let's uh, let's go ahead now and get on with sliding the engine back. The engine's got to go backwards. And I might have to finesse it just a little bit so I can get that first bottom bolt through, which will be uh, right down in here. So this is the new bolt. This is the one that actually was missing, believe it or not. And Trying to stay out of the way of the camera here because this is a bit of an awkward spot to get into. So if I my shoulder or something gets in the way, you'll have to forgive me. Because I can't see what I'm doing. I have to go around to the other side here first. There we go. We'll go ahead and put the nut and washer on that one. Notice that one's awful long too. So that is the part that was called out on the diagram. So I've got it pinned in place here at the bottom. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is rotate.
rotate the engine back here just a bit. Put this piece of plywood underneath it. Like that. See if I can't get this top bolt in. Let's see if we can get this footless bar under there. Let's go around the other side and see if it's uh, lined up at all, and it's not. It's reasonably close. Check this side.
here we have the bolt that goes in here for the uh, footrest bar. And that, that might have to be tweaked just a little bit. Get that to line up properly. Looks like it's pretty well lined up. I did chase all these threads, by the way. sweet spot right there. I'm going to go ahead and put a little anisees on this one because this is probably not going to come out. This one won't come out either, but I might have to finesse it uh, later as I talked about. Check the alignment on the opposite side to see if everything looks okay. And it does. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that uh, threaded bolt right here up. By using a quarter inch small ratchet like this, I can limit the torque I can put on there so I won't do any damage also. So let's, uh, let's assess where we're at. Motor's in, foot, foot rest bar is on, foot peg bar is on. You can see how these both stand out and uh, I'm not real sure why that is right now, again, without going back through all the the um, photos of when I took it apart. This one was missing, remember. This one was is the original. So I'm not real sure why those bolts are so long. I might find out as I progress with the installation. But at this point, the motor's in. So I'm going to go now and put the center stand back on. I actually had the center stand on at one time. You can see, I think, there where I had it uh, in place a while back. But I pulled it out for this uh, video because I wasn't sure I could maintain stability of the project with the center stand. So let me get the center stand um, into the photo here. And uh, that should be very straightforward to go ahead and put that in place. As you can see here, I greased the pivot pin bar for the center stand. I only greased it where there's bearing surface. The section in the middle here and here are not contact points anyway, so there's really no sense in putting any grease on those. But only here and here where it makes contact. So we'll go ahead and see if we can't get this. Something like that. And I'll snap the E clip on the opposite side. Now, obviously, due to the length of this, there's something else that goes on here, and you might be wondering what that is. And it's the rear brake pedal. 
that will slip over this. So this is really just temporary right now until I get around to putting um, the swing arm and the rear brake pedal and the rest of that kind of hardware on. But that's what this additional length here is. So this is really just attached temporarily right now. But all that's left now is to stand it up on the center stand, at least for this video. It's going to be quite a bit heavier than what it's been in the past because it's got that motor in it. At this point, I have to be careful because if I finesse it too much, it's going to want to. This is going to want to kick out, and it's going to want to drop. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to prop the headstock up like this, if I can have a wheel on it, to keep the weight drawing down this way, so that I can keep the center. So that's it for this video. Putting the motor in the YL1. As usual, got any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, drop me a note. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Before I actually end the video, I thought I'd show you how I am supporting the, the frame up here in the center stand. I didn't want to depend on that plastic bucket, so I used this motorcycle ATV jack, which is very handy to have if you don't have one, by the way. So, so you can see I put a piece of uh, planking across the top of the jack, and then I brought that up just enough to kiss the bottom of the engine so that the weight bias continues to be forward so it doesn't want to tilt back on me so it's steady now while I go ahead and start working on it.